All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the ATP CP system. If we remember back to the other videos, we said that this system was used for intensive bouts of exercise that last around 10 seconds. So you're giving an all out effort there. Let's go back and review what ATP is. So we have an adenosine with three phosphates. So adenosine with three phosphates. And normally when you first start working out, we're going to use the immediate source of ATP in the muscle. So we're going to use hydrolysis to break that phosphate off and release energy. And that's going to leave us with adenosine diphosphate. So we have two phosphates here, plus the phosphate that we broke off plus some energy. So this would be considered stored energy. This would be used energy. And in my last video I talked about reversing this process, taking the used energy and getting your ATP back or, or creating some ATP from that used energy. So this is how it works. You have something called creatine phosphate and you notice there the creatine phosphate has a, a phosphate on the end of it. And so we need to get our ATP or ADP back to ATP. So what we do, let me just draw this out here so that it's, it, it's easy to see. I take my ADP over here. So I've still got, I'm still missing a phosphate there. So I take something called creatine kinase. Creatine kinase, which is an enzyme that's going to help us pop this phosphate off. So we're going to take this phosphate here. So we've popped it off with creatine kinase. And we want to add it back there. Well, we need a, another en enzyme to help us out here, which is called ATP ACE. Anytime you see that ACE, you should think enzyme. So we're going to take that phosphate here. We're going to add it back to the ADP. So there's my phosphate. I'm going to add it back there and that's going to equal ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So we've taken our diphosphate which is 2 and popped that phosphate off the creatine phosphate and that's given us our ATP stores back. And so that process would last for about 10 seconds. So for a quick review we can use this stored energy to get us going. So it's only going to last us about two seconds and then we're going to deplete the ATP stores. But once it's depleted, so here's where it's depleted, it's used, we can get it back to ATP for about, we can do this for about 10 seconds because we should have enough creatine phosphate stored in the muscle as well. So not only is ATP stored in the muscle, this creatine phosphate stored in there. So we'll take an enzyme called creatine kinase and we're going to pop that phosphate off and we're going to add it back to our ADP but we need another enzyme to help us out which is ATP ACE and that's going to help us add this phosphate to the ADP giving us ATP and so that energy system would last for about 10 seconds. Well, what if we're doing fairly intense exercise that lasts more than 10 seconds? Let's say it's, it's going to go upwards of, of two minutes well, once that ATP is, is depleted within the muscle, once those ATP stores are depleted, the body has to find an energy source somewhere. So what it does is it starts to break down glucose. So we have glucose here. And that process is called glycolysis. And so in our next video, we're going to talk about anaerobic glycolysis, breaking down glucose to generate ATP, so that we can keep doing exercise for upwards of two minutes or so. And uh, it's still intense, it's just not as intense as the exercise we might do with sprinting. So this, if you remember back to the other videos, we said that this type of exercise would be linked with muscle endurance, so doing a lot of repetitions over a long period of time, whereas this energy system here would be something that involves some muscle strength or power. 
So sprinting, lifting really heavy weight where we're gonna fatigue and use up all that ATP within a couple of, uh, of seconds or so. Now this one is so short, it doesn't build up any lactic acid. But down here, we've gotta be concerned with lactic acid and being able to buffer lactic acid so we can go a little bit longer. So we can use glycolysis a little bit longer before the lactic acid causes the muscles to fatigue. But we'll talk about that in the ne next video. We'll get into um, glycolysis and how through exercise your body will start to produce more sodium bicarbonate so that you can buffer lactic acid so as it starts to build up you can last a little bit longer. And that, that's how athletes improve their muscle endurance is through their ability to buffer lactic acid. But anyway, that's a whole other video series. So I hope you enjoyed this one. And I will see you in the glycolysis video.